New Zealand's rarest species of kiwi is the roe, or Okorito brown kiwi, found here in the Okorito Sanctuary on the west coast. With only around 300 birds remaining, their time was running out. However, thanks to some nifty new technology, the roe have a far greater chance of survival. Kiwi pretty much change burrow or nest site every night, unless they've got an egg to look after. Then they stay put. So the system was pretty simple. They used to turn up in the bush at a fixed point, take a bearing on the kiwi and go, oh, he's over there. Two weeks later, they'd come back and go, oh, he's over there, therefore he's not nesting. But eventually the kiwi would sit in one place and would go, ah, he must be nesting now. He hasn't moved since last time. After about 50 to 60 days, we'd move in and recover the egg. Now, what we do is the transmitter tells us when incubation starts. So we can visit a lot less frequently and we don't have to go so close to the bird to work out where they are. How does the technology work so that a transmitter can tell you what a kiwi is doing? It's simple really. What we have is a tiny activity sensor buried inside a microchip that the kiwi wears on its leg inside the transmitter. The activity sensor is like a cylinder with a ball bouncing around inside it. When the kiwi's asleep, having a rest, the ball is stationary. When it gets up to walk around and feed, the ball bounces around inside that cylinder and creates tiny electrical impulses that we interpret as the kiwi out of bed. We sum the amount of time and we know whether they're looking after an egg or whether they're up all night feeding and then we know when to start the incubation clock. Our old techniques involved tracking the birds down every fortnight and looking in a hole, and that was incredibly time consuming and it was relatively inaccurate because there was two week gaps in between your visits and sometimes you couldn't see the egg properly. So it's dramatically changed what we do. Four years ago when I arrived, we monitor about 30 pairs and now we monitor over 70. The more pairs we monitor, the more chicks we can rescue and the faster we can save the birds. What happens next is you want the ability to monitor more and more kiwi without even sending a kiwi worker into the field. A lot of the places that rangers work are very remote and it takes them a long time just to get near to pick up data. So for example on the Rowie project in the South Island, we now fly that sanctuary in a light aircraft we pick up all the data digitally from the transmitters in what would estimated to be take a ranger about 42 days, I think they estimated. We now do that in about an hour of flying time. We used to spend a lot of time walking from bird to bird, getting beeps, and now we can spend our time going out there and rescuing eggs, rescuing chicks. The less birds you can monitor, the slower your recovery of the species is, and also you get into problems with genetic bottlenecking. So if you're only saving a certain proportion of your population, then you're only saving a small number of genes. Um, and that long term will result in the birds being closely related to each other. As we move into the future of conservation, the opportunities for using new technology are saving Doc time and money. And for the Rowie, this could mean the difference between life and death.